Hey everyone, in this video we will be learning about two variable equation word problems. In these word problems, we want to be able to create a linear equation that represents the situation we've been given. And then we're going to use that linear equation to either answer another question or create a graph. In order to do that, we have to understand how the components of a linear equation equate to the elements in the word problem. So we're going to start there. A Spin Studio charges members a sign up fee and then charges them per class. If the amount of money a member has spent for S classes can be modeled by A equals 10S plus 100, explain what 10 and 100 represent in the context of this problem. Now, if this equation wasn't given to us in the word problem, we would say that 100 is the y intercept, right? 0, 100 would be the y intercept, and 10 is the slope. But that's not what they're looking for. Okay, they want to know what they mean, those values mean, based on this word problem. So in the context of the spin studio. So let's start with 100. So as we said, we would typically say that this is the y-intercept. Right? And the y-intercept happens when the x value is 0. But there is no x in this equation. We have to understand that s is in place of x here. So if S is zero, we've taken no classes, we owe $100. Well, why would we owe $100 before taking any classes? Well, read the question again. There's a sign-up fee. So that 100 represents the sign-up fee. So that's the sign-up fee. And then now moving on to the 10, what does the 10 represent? Well, S is the number of classes. So we take one class, we have 10 plus 100. So now we owe 110. Two classes, we'd have 10 times 2, so 20 plus 100, 120. So every class that we take, the amount that we owe goes up by $10. So what is 10 then? That's the cost per class. Per class, right? Every spin class that we take, we owe another $10. So a good way to think about this is whatever the fixed value in the word problem is, that's going to be what your y-intercept is in your linear equation in mx plus b form. And whatever value is changing, right, so this, in this case, $10 is the cost per class that changes based on how many classes we take, that's going to be our slope. So let's use this information to now go in the other direction and create the linear equation from the word problem. A hockey rink can hold 13,000 fans. When the hockey rink opens, the fans enter at a rate of 125 people per minute. Create an equation that rink officials can use to figure out how many more people can enter the hockey rink after m minutes from opening. Okay, so I'm going to call this equation P, so P equals. So what is our fixed value? Well, our fixed value is the 13,000 fans. And what we're trying to figure out is how many more people can come in. Okay, so not how many people have entered, but how many more can enter. So we want to take away the 125 people that are coming in per minute. Okay, so that means our y-intercept, our b value is 13,000, and our M, our slope is negative 125, right? The amount of people that can come in is decreasing by 125 people per minute. So our equation would be negative 125 M plus 13,000. And maybe not to confuse us, this is the slope, not the M in the problem. Now we could also write this equation and sometimes it's given to us as 13,000 minus 125m. Right? Basically start with our fixed value and we're taking away from that. So how many fans can still enter the stadium after one hour? So the first thing we have to realize is we're not plugging 1 into the equation. m is the number of minutes. So 1 hour is 60 minutes. So we're going to plug 60 in for m, so minus 125 times 60. So doing 
some quick math, we would have 125 times 60. So P equals 13,000 minus 7,500. So 13,000 minus 7,500 is 5,500. So that means 5,500 fans can still come into the stadium after one hour. Samantha can currently do six pull-ups. She plans to increase her total by two each week. Write and graph a linear equation to represent this situation. Okay, so she can currently do six pull-ups and she's increasing her total by two each week. Okay, so based on the number of weeks, we're going up by two. So that's the value that's changing. So that's our slope, our slope would be two. And our B value in the equation, well, what's fixed? Well, currently she can do six pull-ups, right? That's the, the fixed value right now. So B is six. So we can just write this in MX plus B form with Y and X. So Y equals two X plus six. But we have to define our variable here because they did not define it for us. So we'll let X be equal to the number of weeks. So now we can graph this. So we have a Y intercept of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a slope of two. Now what you notice is we really didn't fit much on this graph. So I'm actually going to erase it and start over. Sometimes with these word problems, the numbers don't just fall from one to 10. So what happens when we have values that are larger? We have to scale our axes so that we can fit more on. So in this case, I'm going to scale the Y axis by two. Fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. I'll stop there. X axis will stay by ones, right? So the Y axis that represents the number of pull ups. When we have context, it's really important that we label our axes so we know what it represents. And then here we have the number of weeks. Four, five, and we can continue that. So now if we graph, the y-intercept is 0, 6. Now a slope of 2, we have to be careful. We're not going up two boxes over 1 because our scale is different. Now to go up 2, we only go up one box. And then to the right one, that's still 1. So now going up 1 over 1 on our graph is equivalent to a slope of 2. And then we can use our line tool to graph our line. Now, it's important to recognize that this can also happen in the reverse direction. Maybe I give you this graph and say, what is the slope of this line? And if you just fall into the trap of counting boxes, you would say that the slope is one, but the slope is really two. So that's something to pay attention for if you're not looking at the details of the graph. Mr. Johnson just purchased a new laptop for $600. He set up a payment plan where he pays $75 per month. Write and graph a linear equation to represent the situation. Okay, so I'm going to let M be the number of months. Okay, so we need to define our slope which again is M, so I'm writing it just as slope so we don't have conflict, uh, a conflict here. And then we need our B value for our equation. Okay, so what's our fixed value in this problem? The fixed value is the cost of the laptop. That's not changing. That's going to be 600. And then he's paying $75 per month, right? So he's decreasing what he owes by $75 each month that passes. So the slope would be negative 75. So our equation, so let's write capital C for cost, how much he still has to pay, 
is going to be negative 75m plus 600. Again, we can write it as 600 minus 75m as well. Now notice these values are quite large. Going from 1 to 10 on each axis is not going to be sufficient. So for the y-axis, let's go up by 75. So every 2 is going to be 150. And I like to do that every once in a while so it doesn't look too cluttered here. So we get up to 600. So that's the cost, or how much is left. And then on the x-axis, we're going to have the months. So that's just going to go by ones. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the number of months. OK, so y-intercept is 0, 600. And then we have a slope of negative 75. But remember, each box on the y-axis represents $75. So we're only going down one to the right one, down one to the right one. We're going to continue that. Now notice I don't put arrows on either side here because it wouldn't make sense in the context of this problem, right? We would never have negative months and we would never owe negative money. So we're just going to stop at the y and x intercepts. Okay. Our next example, a bagel costs $2 and an orange juice costs $3 at the local bagel store. Miss Euler spent $30 at the bagel store this morning. Write and graph a linear equation to represent this situation. So this is a little bit different than the problems that we've been looking at because we need to define both our variables. It's not that one is months and then just cost or amount owed. We actually have two different things in this problem. So we'll start by saying let x be the number of bagels. We could also use b there. And we'll say y is the number of OJs. Could have used o there, although I'd probably stick with something that's not O, doesn't look like zero. Okay, so number of bagels is X, and she spent $2 per bagel. So she spent two times X on bagels. Y is the number of OJs, and she spent $3 per OJ. So three times Y, and in total she spent $30. So our equation is 2X plus 3Y equals 30. Now in order to graph, we have to figure out how to scale our axes. So what I would do is find the x and the y-intercept, something that we've done before. So the x-intercept happens when the y-coordinate is 0. So if we plug 0 in for y, we'd have 2x equals 30, x equals 15. And the y-intercept happens when x is 0. So we'd have 3y equals 30, y equals 10. OK, so we have to fit 0, 10 on the y-axis and 15, 0 on the x. So for the y-axis, we can just go by 1s. I'll just label every other box, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And then on the x-axis, to fit 15, we let's go by threes. So three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. We could probably spread it out. Actually, let's spread it out a little bit more. So we use more of the graph that we've been given. So let's go every two boxes is three. So we'd have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. That looks better. Okay, so the y-axis, that's the number of OJs, and the x-axis is the number of bagels. Okay, so plot our two points, so 15, 0, 0, 10. We've done this before just using the intercepts, and we'll connect those two points to get our graph.
right? So there, all the points on this line, in particular, the nice points on this line, give us all the combinations of bagels and orange juices that Miss Euler could have chosen. So if she bought four orange juices, so they're telling us she bought four orange juices, how many bagels did she buy? So we could substitute four in for y. So we'd have two x plus three times four equals 30. So two x plus 12 equals 30. Subtract 12 on both sides. Two x equals 18. Divide by two on both sides. X equals nine. So she would have bought nine bagels. Now the point nine four should be on our graph. Nine four, that's that point right there. So we could have either figured this answer out based off our graph or algebraically. And I wanted us to see both of the options. Now our last example, Charlie has 48 dog treats for his golden retriever. And each day he gives his dog two treats. To figure out how many days the dog treats will last, he creates the equation t equals 48x minus 2. Explain why his equation is wrong and write the correct equation. So why is his equation wrong? Well, we said that the slope or the m value is what's changing and the b value or y-intercept is the fixed value. If we look at our word problem, the number of dog treats that he starts with is the fixed value. That's not changing. He has 48 dog treats, right? So that should be the B value in the equation. And then the slope, well, he's giving his dog two treats per day. So he's decreasing the number by two each day that he has left. So the slope should be negative two. So explain means we have to write in words, explain why his equation is wrong. So he switched the slope and y-intercept in his equation. And then the correct equation would be t equals negative 2x plus 48. Okay, so a lot of work with word problems in this video, hey, taking the information that they've given us and creating a linear equation. And given a linear equation, identifying what the components of the linear equation mean in the context of the problem, which is so important so that we can do everything successfully. All right, so try some on your own and feel good about this topic.